Labor's reckless indifference towards regional communities is jeopardising their target of 82 per cent renewables by 2030 and up to 100 per cent thereafter. To be clear, the Coalition has never supported Labor's renewables only strategy for decarbonising the Australian electricity grid. We don't believe a renewables only approach is the way to decarbonise the system. Instead, we back an all of the above approach. We do believe there's an important role for renewables, but we should be aiming for the optimum level of renewables, not the maximum level. But Labor has adopted this renewables only approach. And the problem is their plan is not working. What we see now from the market experts, they are publicly saying that Labor's plan is running at half the pace that it should. And now this won't change any time soon because we also know that investment in renewables has now hit its lowest ebb in years after year-on-year -year increases under the coalition. We now see that final investment decision in renewables has dropped by about 40 per cent under Labor for new renewable generation projects. Their plan isn't working. Now, at a time when your plan isn't working, you would think you would be recalibrating the plan. They might decide to do what they should have done in the beginning and get either Treasury, the Department of Productivity Commission, to model the viability of the plan and see the impact that it would have and whether or not they'd be able to achieve it. But they haven't done that. Instead, falling so short, they become desperate and they are steamrolling over regional communities. Take the Hunter region, for example, the Hunter offshore wind zone. Now, the government opened public consultations for that wind zone in February, closed it in April, a 65-day public consultation. My office was inundated with complaints from different communities, in particular Nora Head. I visited Nora Head in July and I heard from the community in an open forum that most of them didn't even know there was a public consultation about this offshore wind zone. Residents weren't even told about it. Unions had been co-opted encouraging members to make positive submissions. Senior citizens had been denied the right to make submissions that were handwritten. There were too few public consultation forums. Those that were held, I heard complaints about residents asking very reasonable questions and not getting enough answers, not getting any answers in some cases. Complaints about people's threat to their way of life, to their livelihood, whether it be tourism, whether it be fisheries. Now, on that day I was at Nora Head, I gave the government credit because the minister Order. came out that very day and announced that he would ensure there is a community engagement review. Tear them out to an admission, an admission that their community engagement process for all such projects wasn't working, it was broken. And I gave him credit that at least maybe the government's listening. But within a fortnight, within a fortnight, the minister then declared that zone. So on one hand, he concedes the process is flawed, but then goes ahead and announces the zone. We therefore have called on the minister to rescind that declaration, to fix the broken process before then reopening for public consultations. And let me make it clear, no one in that community was talking about their concerns being anti-action on climate change. Quite the opposite. None of them were anti the technology of wind. Quite the opposite. Their concern came down to not giving social consent, a lack of a social licence, not being engaged. And I'm scared because I've heard similar concerns out of the Illawarra. They need to listen to communities. Order, I thank